it's a miracle that I'm here today alive. I'm Deirdre Wagner. I was a world-class ultra-distance triathlete. I was ranked 11th in the world in ultra-distance triathlons. I was a member of the United States Developmental Cycling Team. The national team coaches were grooming me for the Tour de France. I was also a member of Saucony Shoes National Triathlon Team. I also had my own sports TV show. I co-produced it, hosted, show that was a combination of reality and sports competition in Annapolis, Maryland, called Be Your Best. It was a sunny summer day in Leesburg, Virginia. I was competing in the Leesburg Regional Bicycle Race. So many cyclists from several surrounding states came. It was in the center of the city. It was a beautiful, hilly race. I was competing as a team member with the U.S. cycling team. I was so excited and so nervous because they were waiting to group me to compete in the Tour de France, so I really wanted to do well that day. So I was competing in the race. I was with the pack. We go around the back side of the course, flying downhill, the woods to the side. Being a daredevil, I swooped through the 90 degree turn, picked up my bike, and there was a red car that came onto the course, blocking the entire road. Smack! I hit the trunk of the car, flew up in the air, smashed on the pavement. A little boy in the crowd said, wow, that was so cool, you flew way high in the air. I was on the pavement, I, did, I didn't know what happened, but I snapped back up, but little did I know, I was in shock. I didn't know the extent of the head, neck, and spinal injuries that I got. My friends that I was competing with drove me home to Annapolis at night. And I thought, well, this will pass. You know, I'm strong, everything will heal. Well, several days later, I woke up I wanted to answer the telephone. I picked it up, and I could hardly talk. I thought I had laryngitis. I thought, oh, this will be over in a day or two. But no, I lost my voice. Your voice is special to each and every one of you, just like your fingerprints. So the doctors, I went to so many doctors, and they finally diagnosed me with spasmodic dysphonia and voluntary spasms of the vocal cords. The day I hit that car, was the end of the life as I knew it. I loved doing triathlons. It was exciting, fun. I traveled throughout the United States. I competed in Europe. I was sponsored by international clothing companies. And I lost the bike show. Everything changed. And when something like that happens to you, you go through the dark night of the soul. 
And I wondered if I really wanted to be here. But I felt a higher power. And I felt that God saved me for a reason. I just needed to find out what that reason was. So I f soon found out that from the accident, I became clairaudient and clairvoyant. I started to do massage since that was something I didn't have to talk. And one of the things, people started thinking I was slow, retarded, elderly. And none of those things were true. I had the self-image that I was a world-class athlete. So my world was completely shattered. But I started to do massage. I found out I had a gift. And not only that, because I couldn't talk hardly, I started to listen, really listen. Not think about what I was going to say next, but really start to listen. And then I found out I had an inner voice that was talking to me. So when I would do massage, the person on the table, I would hear, oh, go to their feet first, because they won't relax unless you do. And I thought, that's not what I learned in massage school. But I would do with a voice to ask, and all of a sudden the person would relax, and they would have a wonderful healing experience. And then I th thought, there was something that I was supposed to learn. I heard a voice saying, there was a body work that you were you're supposed to learn, but it's not in any of the massage schools. I was in San Diego at the time. I had moved there where a lot of world-class triathletes trained. And I checked out all the massage schools. Nothing in their curriculum uh, appealed to me. But the manager from the gym that I worked at, where I was a personal trainer, he called me, he goes, Deirdre, there's this body work called shin therapy. Physical Emotional Release Therapy. I really think you should check it out. I went to the class. I fell in love with it. And it started to heal my voice. My voice started to get stronger. And then when I started to work on people, they had marvelous healing experiences. Who knew? that I had a gift for healing. I wouldn't have known unless I had followed that inner voice. Do you have an inner voice that is talking to you? That you feel that there is something that you need to do that you aren't taking the action steps for? So I called these divine breadcrumbs. I would hear from the inner voice and I would follow it. And then I thought, oh, OK. Since I can hardly talk, what's the next thing that I'm supposed to do? And I heard, I know. I'll get into acting. <laughs> what? And the voice said, yes, you're supposed to become an actress and get back in front of the camera like when you hosted your own TV show. And I'm like, wow. And I laugh. And I go, oh, you guys are funny. And, <laughs> and, and they said, no, really. And, and they got so loud. I go like, OK, enough. Show me how to do this. So right at that second, I looked on my couch. And there was a newspaper, the local newspaper. I pulled it off the couch, opened it up. There on the society page were pictures about a gala at the Performing Arts Theater for the Handicap. It was five miles from my house that I didn't even know was there. So I could, they said in the paper that they had a free workshop. So I called them up. I go, I, I'd like 
they got that, they go, oh, you qualify. <laughs> they go, come on in. And so, so, so I went in, and there were physically handicapped, mentally handicapped, and able-bodied people. So finally, I felt comfortable to talk and not feel shame or embarrassment. And soon, I, I was doing scene study and improv and having the time of my life. After the class, the director goes, how long have you been acting? And I said, today. <laughs> and, and he goes, do you want to come back? I go, yes. So soon he had a class workshop production, and it was a musical. So I go like, OK. And the music director, and she used to sing opera for Burbank, California. And so she said, anybody who wants to come and help with the music, come on up. So I went over to talk to her. And I said, well, I'd like to you know, you know, help you out with the music. And she was an amputee. And she said, what makes you think you can sing when you can hardly talk? And I thought, that's pretty bold talk for someone missing a leg. <laughs> but it, I picked up the score, and I just started humming the tune of one of the songs. She looked at me, her eyes goes wide. She goes, you can read music? I'm like, yes. And once you know, she and I became the best of friends and ended up doing duets for the show. Who knew? Who knew I could sing better than I could talk? <laughs> and, and then, and then it, the stepping on the stage for that show gave me the same chills and thrills as when I stepped on the beach starting a triathlon and they would announce my name. I would go, oh my goodness, I am supposed to do this. I loved it. But soon I started hearing something else. They go like, you're supposed to go to Los Angeles for her acting, it's time to go to a bigger pun. What? <laughs> I was so scared to go to such a big pun and really go for it. But once you know the voices, then my landlord called and said, you got to move. I'm selling the house. It was uncanny. <laughs> and so, so I moved to Los Angeles. And when you're in Los Angeles to become an actor, you have to do other jobs to support yourself. So my roommate, he was an actor at a pharmaceutical sales rep. And so he goes, Deirdre, you should become a pharmaceutical sales rep. <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> I have to do I say complicated medical terms to doctors. I go like, no, those divine breadcrumbs are falling on the wrong path. <laughs> but I listened to the inner voice. And I started to study. And I took the test. And why don't you know? I got several pharmaceutical sale job offers. And who would think that I would have the job that I have now? I have had a pharmaceutical job for five years. I won Rookie of the Year. I got five consecutive top sales awards. Who knew? Is there something that you feel drawn to that you really have a passion for, but you aren't following that inner voice directing you? 
that's important. So it's ironic that every job, every path that the inner voices told me to go to, ironically used my voice. It became stronger. My self-confidence started to come back. And it led me to be able to be with you today and share my story. So sometimes our biggest obstacles create our greatest success. And I invite you to have a breakthrough, to be the very best you can be. Thank you.